So if you saw in my last video, I just recently purchased a huge comic book collection. And this is the part two video, which I hope to clarify all of your questions. There was a lot of comments and I really appreciate it. So I hope to further answer those questions in the comments and clarify everything about this collection. There were 46 short boxes and eight long boxes. So if there's about 150 comics in a short box and 300 in a long box, if you do the math, that's about 9,300 comics plus the seller threw in almost 200 trade paperbacks and graphic novels. There was also Golden Age in this collection, which was amazing. Some of it I thought to be Golden Age and was actually later 60s reprints, but we'll get to that in just a moment. So like I said, there were so many great comments and questions about this collection, which unfortunately I couldn't answer in the first video. That was just kind of an introduction video, but here I'm going to explain everything. I'll tell you what I paid for the collection and what I intend on doing with this collection and all the other details. And we're also going to look at all of the best books that I found in this almost 10,000 comic book collection. There were some great books. Uh, a lot of these books I'm actually keeping for myself. I have no intention on making tons of money with this collection. Honestly, this purchase was basically just to fund the hobby. There's a lot of books I'm keeping and a lot of books that I'm selling for a dollar or even less. I do have a whatnot channel, but really a lot of these dollar books aren't worth selling on whatnot. I sell at local flea markets and I have some listings on Facebook Marketplace and things like that. So that's how I'm moving these comics of the ones I don't want, but I am keeping quite a few of them. So a quick little backstory about this sale. I found this on Facebook Marketplace and I guess I was one of the first people to message the seller. And this seller lived about an hour from where I live. And I went out there once he told me they were still available and I met with the guy and he was really, really cool, really nice guy. Supposedly, he used to own a comic book shop and uh, I guess it only lasted for maybe a few years and then he closed up the shop. This guy was mainly a comic reader. This wasn't like a comic collector's collection. This was somebody who loved reading comics. That's why there were full runs of so many series. And he did have some collectible books as well. Uh, you know, he liked some Golden Age stuff. He loved horror and Wolverine and Deadpool and Spider-Man. Uh, he was a big Batman collector and reader. So there was a lot of that stuff in this collection. Also, as you see with all the graphic novels, this guy just read like crazy. So basically, I met with the seller. He had a firm price of what he wanted to sell the collection for. And I did no negotiating. I just gave him what he asked. And we'll talk about that in just a moment, the price I paid. But I just want to give you a little backstory. Uh, but like I said, he was mainly a reader. He owned a comic book store. And he even told me that he really didn't have much money into these books. A lot were given to him for free or, you know, he got in collection buys or he just took off the shelf of his store. So basically, you know, he didn't have a lot of money into it. Also, he was moving out of state and he had all of these comic books in a third floor apartment. Luckily, that apartment had an elevator because loading all these books out of his apartment was a bit of a hassle, uh, but it wasn't too bad, to be honest. Uh, and luckily, I have a big van uh, that I use for my job, so I was able to transport these back home fairly easy. So that's pretty much the story with this collection. We'll talk about the price in just a moment. So let's dive into all the keys that I found in this collection. All right, so let's take a look at some of the Golden Age stuff real quick. Uh, in the first video, I showed off this box here of Golden Age. Uh, this one here I thought was the first appearance of Peter Pan. Uh, it has the exact same cover, but this is, I guess, a reprint because the issue number is 926. Uh, the actual first appearance of Peter Pan was a lot lower of a number, but it's still Dell four color. You know, it's still an older book, but this was a reprint, so not the actual first appearance. Uh, a lot of these classic illustrated books, I believe to be reprints as well. 
uh, possibly from like the 60s. You know, I'm still learning about all of these older books, especially Classics Illustrated and Dell Four Color. I mean, they're a little bit confusing uh, for somebody, you know, like me that doesn't deal with these often. So that's those books that we saw in the first video. These are definitely golden and silver age books, uh, Dell books, really cool stuff with a little bit of four color, and then it goes into some Dell and gold key. This book here was an awesome find. This is Turok, Son of Stone, a Dell four color 656. And this is, I believe, the second appearance of Turok which is really cool. I love the artwork. Uh, you know, just really excited to find these. Some more Dell four color, um, or actually, I'm sorry, not four color, but uh, Dell uh, Turok Son of Stone. This would be the next issue. So I believe the third appearance of Turok. And basically the entire run of Turok from Dell Comics. Really, really awesome. Uh, so it goes, you know, the 10 cent books, 15 cent gold key books. I mean, these are so cool. Really excited to find these. I love the artwork. I always thought Turok was awesome. Uh, I love playing the uh, the video game on Nintendo 64 back in the day. But really cool to find almost the entire run of Turok here. So that is just a really cool find. Excited to have those in the collection. This next box here, they're not key comics in here, but these are just some cool comics that I found. Uh, in the beginning here, we actually have some trade paperbacks. Uh, Uncanny X-Men Days of Future Past. Really cool. The full story here on a trade paperback. Also, this Punisher movie special. I thought that was pretty cool. There was actually two copies of those. And then a whole bunch of these Amalgam comics. I think these are really cool. DC versus Marvel, issue number one. Such a cool concept, mashing DC and Marvel. And there is the full run here, issue one and two and three and issue number four. Uh, the series might go longer than that. I'm not sure, to be honest. Uh, we have Amalgam Comics as well. Legends of Dark Claw number one. This is Wolverine and Batman mashup. How awesome is that? Awesome cover. We got Magneto and the Magnet Men. Really cool. We got X-Patrol, which is like, I guess, X-Force and uh, Doom Patrol, I guess, mixed together. I don't know. Really, really cool. JLX, a little Justice League and X-Men. Uh, that's really cool. Uh, Doctor Strange Fate. So we have Doctor Strange and Doctor Fate mashed together here. Uh, we got the Assassins issue number one. Very cool cover. We got Spider-Boy number one. This was cool to find. I know a lot of people were talking about this book uh, when the Marvel Spider-Boy uh, just came out in comics. You know, his first appearance. Uh, in uh, those recent Spider-Man comics. But this is kind of a mix between Spider-Man and Superboy. So Spider-Boy, a different Spider-Boy than we're seeing today in Marvel. Uh, Speed Demon. I guess this is Ghost Rider and Flash, I guess. Pretty cool. Bullets and Bracelets. Pretty awesome. Wonder Woman and uh, Punisher. Bruce Wayne, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. I thought that is so cool. All right, and then we also have some more X-Men here uh, that we, let's see, did we see these in the first video? Actually, we might have. All right, let me keep going real quick. I think we saw some of these. I think I pulled these out uh, to put them in new bags and boards. Let me see what else we have. Okay, so we saw those X-Men books in the last uh, video. There wasn't really much of the keys, uh, but we'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, here's just a couple other cool books that I pulled for my own personal collection. Uh, Marvel Spotlight 27 with Submariner. Uh, Savage Submariner number 70. This is the first appearance of Piranha. We have Spider-Woman number 10. We got Spider-Woman 50, which is the final issue of the series. Uh, Son of or Marvel Spotlight 13 featuring Son of Satan. Uh, pretty cool. I guess this is like uh, origin retold or something like that. Origin story. Uh, Marvel Spotlight 31. That has a minor key significance. 
We got some Web Spider-Man, uh, Peter Parker, Spectacular Spider-Man, uh, Craven's Last Hunt, Part 6. And this actually is a Mark, Mark Jewelers variant, which is really cool. I didn't find too many Mark Jewelers, but that was one of them. Uh, Web of Spider-Man, Craven Part 1 in a newsstand. Uh, classic Carnage. Some more Spectacular. More Spectacular. Nothing too crazy here. Some Black Cat. Awesome uh, cover there. Some more Black Cat on Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, Web of Spider-Man. I think this was like a preview of Spider-Man 20, 20, uh, 2099. Uh, Kroll movie special issue number one. Contest of Champions number three in a newsstand. Really awesome cover. And Fantastic Four 257. Another great cover. All right, so this next stack of books here are just really cool books that I pulled aside uh, because there were multiples of these and I thought they were really interesting and I want to add them to my personal collection. These are all the Carnageized covers. Uh, Black Panther 14, Captain America 12, Carnageized, Conan number 8. I just think these are so cool. Uh, Fantastic Four 12, Thanos number 4, Loki number 1. Great covers. Uh, Uncanny X-Men 21. That one's really cool. Immortal Hulk number 20. Savage Avengers, number three. Black Cat, number two. That one's awesome. Guardians, number seven. Uncanny X-Men, 22. Captain Marvel, number eight. Deadpool, number uh, 15. Scotty Young. That one's really awesome. Amazing Spider-Man, 25. And Doctor Strange, number 17. And then Venom, number 16. All really cool covers, and it's a cool little set to have in the collection. All right, in this stack of books, we have some keys, minor keys, some modern stuff, and just a couple books that have some good value. Uh, first book here, Amazing Spider-Man 529, the debut of the Iron Spider suit. Really cool cover. Unfortunately, it does have some spine ticks, uh, you know, not the highest grade. That's the thing with these books. Uh, everything in this collection has been read. The previous owner was an avid comic book reader. So nothing is in mint, you know, condition. Uh, there's a couple spine ticks or whatever, you know, all the books have a little bit of issues because they've been well read and well loved, which I can't blame them. Uh, but cool book here, Amazing Spider-Man, Spider, -Man, Spider uh, Iron Spider suit, debut. Really cool. Uh, awesome J. Scott Campbell cover from Amazing Spider-Man 51 with Mary Jane. Really nice cover. Also Amazing Spider-Man 52, another classic uh, J. Scott Campbell cover with uh, featuring Mary Jane. Beautiful cover. Uh, going on to some other artists, we have some Scotty Young. Uh, this book has some decent value, Venom 150. Such a cool Scotty Young cover. Really happy to find this one. And uh, this one's actually in pretty nice condition. Uh, no spine ticks on this one. Really cool. Another Scotty Young on Black Cat number one. Pretty awesome. And moving on to another artist, we have Adam Hughes cover. Uh, this is a key for the run. This is a Lara Croft Tomb Raider Alpha Omega. This is the final issue of Tomb Raider, issue number 50. Great Adam Hughes cover, and uh, the book has, you know, a little bit of value, which is nice. Looks like it has an old price tag for 10 bucks on there. I think it's like a 15 to 20 maybe even $30 book now. Not too bad at all. This was really cool. I love Garbage Pail Kids. And this is IDW's Garbage Pail Kids uh, one-shot. The first appearance of GPK in comic books. Really, really cool to find that. Uh, this book actually is in pretty nice shape. So not too bad. First appearance of Garbage Pail Kids. Uh, Astonishing X-Men. There was basically the entire run 
Uh, I do have the first appearance of like Abigail Brand and, you know, a couple of those other uh, keys in this run. I just grabbed this one because it's such an awesome cover. Astonishing X-Men number three with Wolverine. Very cool, but almost the entire run was in there. This was really cool find. Uh, I actually didn't know about this one. This is Return of Wolverine, uh, issue number one, second printing. But inside this book, it's actually an error. Uh, pages 2, 3, 38, 39 are... Uh, from the Doctor Doctor Afra number twenty five, you know Star Wars comic, so it has some misprinted uh, pages in this book, and it's not crazy amount of value, but I think it brings it to like a twenty or thirty dollar book because of its error. But awesome cover, and the book itself is actually in pretty nice shape. Um, there was a couple copies of this, uh, but not this was the only one that was an error, so that was kind of interesting. Uh, these books had some surprising value. Uh, these are Halloween from Chaos Comics. Uh, really, really cool. This is Halloween 3 for the movie. Super cool cover. And these have some pretty decent value. Halloween number 2, Michael Myers cover. Issue number 1, very cool. And then the most value would be on this one here, Halloween number 1. Uh, the first appearance of Michael Myers in comics. So, pretty awesome. Really a decent looking book as well. This might be a cool one to send out for grading if I ever wanted to do that. Really nice book. Uh, also, Friday the 13th, Badland, issue number one. Uh, this book had some pretty good value as well. So some surprising finds. Uh, like I said, this collector and uh, the owner of the previous owner of this collection loved horror stuff, which is awesome with me because I am a huge, huge horror fan. All right, another stack of books here with just some cool books and some minor keys as well. Uh, what If 31, What If Wolverine Killed the Hulk in a newsstand. Pretty cool book here. Uh, what If Wolverine Was an Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. What If Wolverine Battled Conan. Uh, we have Amazing Spider-Man 244. This is the third appearance of Hobgoblin. Just a really cool jack-o'-lantern jack cover. Not too bad. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 204. That's the third appearance of Black Cat. We got X-Force issue number eight. The first uh, appearance of Domino. We got a Secret Wars number 10. Pretty cool. We got Savage She-Hulk uh, issue number 25. Uh, this is the final issue in the series. Not too bad. Actually a pretty decent looking book. Uh, New Mutants 26, first appearance of Legion. Ms. Marvel, issue number two, the second appearance of Ms. Marvel, Car Carol Danvers. Uh, not too bad here. This one's actually in decent shape. Uh, we got a Hawkeye, issue number one. This thing's in pretty bad shape. It's got some staining, some spine wear. This was a cool find. Uh, Incredible Hulk, issue 256, the first appearance of Sabra. Um, which we might be seeing in the new uh, Captain America movie, which is pretty awesome. And Spider-Woman issue number two. And Spider-Woman issue number three, first appearance of Brothers Grimm. We got New Mutants Annual issue number two, which is the first appearance of Psylocke. A uh, really cool book to find here. It has a bunch of spine ticks, unfortunately, so nothing too crazy. Uh, you see another annual here. This is X-Men Annual 14, the first appearance of Gambit. Not too bad at all. This one's in decent shape. Nice to find this book. A lot of good X-Men books in this, uh, in this collection. Uh, Incredible Hulk 377, classic cover. Uh, another copy, which we saw this in the previous video, uh, this collection had the entire Wolverine series, issue 1 through 130, including all the keys. And this uh, little key as well, uh, first um, time, I guess, first time Sabretooths in a Wolverine series, I believe is the significance, uh, issue number 10. Uh, but there was another copy, this, so two copies of this. And then another copy of Wolverine 27, can't, can't complain about that. This was a cool find. I know this book was uh, 
you know, kind of getting popular. I guess this is kind of like the poor man's uh, Hulk 181. Uh, you know, this basically reprints Hulk 180 and 181 uh, in this book here. Uh, you know, first appearance of Wolverine battling uh, the Hulk. Just really cool book. Uh, excited to find this one in the collection as well. So, you know, we had some keys in here, some cool covers, uh, just some cool stuff that I wanted for my own personal collection. Like I said, I'm keeping a lot of this stuff. Uh, I'm really just selling off the dollar books, uh, basically to fund the hobby, uh, you know, so maybe I can get these books uh, for free or for a discount or however you want to look at it. But excited to, to find some of this stuff. Now let's move on to some even better books. Well, there wasn't a whole lot of Silver Age in this collection, really hardly anything, uh, but there were a couple DCs and a couple Marvel Silver Age and early Bronze Age books. So let's take a look at those. We've got Tomahawk, uh, issue number 113. Not too bad. Pretty cool looking cover here. Can't go wrong with a little uh, Silver Age Tomahawk. We also got Blackhawk. This one's in not horrible condition. Uh, issue 216, pretty cool. Action Comics, really cool cover. Issue 364 with a huge chip out of the corner, but really cool cover. Uh, Action Comics, another Silver Age, issue 355. Lots of spine ticks, you know, pretty uh, lower mid-grade books here, but still happy to have a little bit of Silver Age in here. Action Comics 287, lots of chips out of the corner, pretty rough shape on this one. And we got some Silver Age Aquaman, issue number 20, pretty cool, very low grade. Some more Aquaman, really rough shape, issue number 28, I believe, but this thing's in really rough shape. And then this one's actually a key, which is kind of cool. This is Aquaman 23, the first appearance of Aqua Baby. Pretty cool. I think, is that what it is? Yeah, first appearance of Aqua Baby. <laughs> pretty awesome. Rough shape, though. Pretty bad, uh, bad condition. And then this one here is another key, which actually has quite a bit of value. The Atom number seven. And this is the first team up of Hawkman and the Atom. Pretty cool cover with the uh, UFO. And a uh, nice early uh, Adam book here. So not too bad. Little Silver Age DC. Let's check out the Marvel books. All right, a little uh, Bronze and Silver Age Marvel here. Uh, this Amazing Spider-Man 103, really rough shape. Uh, I was actually going to throw it in my press just to, to clean it up a little bit uh, because it is just rough condition. I figured with a little press, it might look a little nicer. Throw it in a bag and board and call it a day. Um, but pretty cool. Still a cool cover. Uh, this has some key significance. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, this one I'm also putting in my press, Amazing Spider-Man 206. Uh, that's why it's not in a bag and board right now. I got to do a little clean and press on it. Also a little Bronze Age Hulk issue 130. Not too bad. Pretty, uh, pretty rough shape though. Some staining, lots of color breaks. Also, let's put these so we can see them. Uh, Kazar, issue number two, pretty cool, not too bad. Got a little uh, Silver Age Daredevil here. We got some uh, Daredevil 46, and these are all in pretty rough shape. They're not the best condition. Uh, well, this one doesn't look too bad. Some of them are pretty low grade, though. Uh, Daredevil 46, though, under issue 50, can't complain. Uh, also, issue number 50, pretty cool here. I mean, it's not horrible condition, but some uh, Silver Age Daredevil. Also issue 51, not too bad. And then issue number, uh, or King Size Special issue number two. So a little bit of earlier Marvel books, but that's pretty much most of it. Uh, let's go on to some of the other interesting and cool finds. All right, now let's get into all the X-Men that I did not show yet. I got a lot of comments saying, uh, you know, in the last video that 
Unfortunately, all those keys were missing out of that X-Men run. Well, I actually pulled all the keys out and all of the older X-Men books that I found. So let's see all the best X-Men books. Uh, there's a couple non-keys mixed in here as well, but these ones uh, were separated from that other full short box of Uncanny X-Men. Earliest book that I found was X-Men 22. This thing's in very low grade, pretty rough shape here. But honestly, to find such an early X-Men issue was awesome. Really excited about that. Pretty cool cover as well. Also, X-Men 89, Subhuman, pretty cool. Also, you know, not in the best shape, but like I said, early X-Men is amazing. All right, how about X-Men issue 110? These are actually in decent shape. X-Men 112. This is an awesome George Perez cover, but the cool thing about this book is it is actually a Mark Jewelers. Uh, I opened up the book when I put it in a new bag and board, and inside was the Mark Jewelers insert, which was an awesome surprise. So really excited to find that. Uh, great, great cover, awesome X-Men book, but also a Mark Jewelers insert. All right, also uh, X-Men 115 with Sauron on the cover. Now we're getting into a couple cool keys here. Uncanny X-Men 130, uh, was it 131? Uh, first cover appearance of the White Queen. Third appearance of Kitty Pride. Dark Phoenix Saga Part 3. Awesome find here. Pretty nice looking book as well. Another Dark Phoenix Saga book, 134. This one's pretty clean. And this one has some decent value. Not too bad at all. Excited to find this one. Such a cool cover as well. Issue 136, another awesome book. Very cool to find that one. They also had issue 142. Really cool Days of Future Past. Uh, classic book. I mean, this one's not in the best shape. It has a big color break. You know, not uh, the best looking book, but presents okay. So definitely cool to find that. And then a couple other random ones, 146, uh, issue 150 in a newsstand, and then issue 150 direct. We got 152. Also had 164. Very cool. First appearance of Binary, uh, Carol Danvers. Very cool. Uh, 166, the first appearance of Lockheed. 168, the first appearance of Madeline Pryor. These books actually aren't in horrible shape. Uh, 184, first appearance of Forge. 193, another great book here. First appearance of Firestar in continuity. We got Uncanny X-Men 211. I love these 25th anniversary border covers. Awesome Wolverine uh, close-up. And the first full appearance of the Marauders. Issue 212, awesome Wolverine cover. First battle between Sabretooth and Wolverine. Uh, 213, another classic book here. Uh, Betsy Braddock joins X-Men and adopts the name Psylocke. And first cameo appearance of Mr. Sinister. And you probably saw it. There was an issue 221. First appearance of Mr. Sinister. In a direct edition, uh, but honestly, book is not horrible. Definitely not going to be a 9.8, but it's a pretty clean looking copy. Excited to find a nice key. That's like pretty much one of the better keys that were in this whole collection. Uh, Uncanny X-Men uh, 222, another classic uh, cover, Battle Between the Marauders. There was a 244. It's not in the best shape, though. First appearance of Jubilee. Couple spine ticks on there. Eh, not horrible, but definitely not a 9.8. And then, lastly, we have X-Men, uh, Uncanny X-Men 268. Just that classic Jim Lee cover. Very cool. So, there were a handful of X-Men keys, uh, which I ended up pulling out from... Uh, 
the rest of the books, but you know, not too bad. Some decent books in here. All right, we're almost finished here, but this stack I wanted to show off real quick. There's a, a little stack of signed books, which I thought was pretty cool to find. Uh, some of these, I really don't even know what they are. Blackjack, uh, signed by some Simpson, I believe that's the signature there. Uh, Blackjack, number one, signed. The Forgotten, looks like we got a triple signature there. If anybody knows about these books, uh, let me know. We have American Vampire, which I believe is signed here by Scott Snyder, so that's kind of cool. And looks like there's two copies signed by Scott Snyder. Uh, this is Tarot. I don't know. Looks crazy. It looks pretty cool. It's got a signature on there. And then there's also like a uh, like an art card here uh, that is signed and individually numbered. So pretty cool. Had a $25 price tag. Yeah, pretty cool. Something different. Uh, Vampires of New Jersey. Some more signed books here from Vampires in New Jersey. Uh, the Eyes of Asia, issue number one. With, looks like, Ken Hayser and Peter DeLuca signature. Not really familiar with this stuff. Uh, if anybody knows, let me know down in the comments. Phantasm with two signatures on there. Pretty cool. Also, Midnight Suns Unlimited signed here. That's pretty cool. Two signatures there. I can't remember who is that signature. Let me know down in the comments. You probably know. I can't remember off the top of my head. This was really cool. The Crow, Volume 2, signed by James O'Barr in 1994. How awesome is that? That is really cool to have a signature from him. Uh, on a crow uh, trade paperback. Really, really cool. This was pretty awesome. This is Daredevil, issue 132. And this is the second appearance of Bullseye. And it is signed by Marv Wolfman. Very, very cool to find that one. The book is actually in pretty rough shape. Uh, but it's got a signature. And it's a, uh, a little bit of a minor key. Second appearance of Bullseye. Pretty awesome. And then this was really cool. This is X-Men 300, signed by John Romita Jr. Right there. And it's in like this little, uh, or has this little COA on the front here. It's also sealed. Limited treasured edition, seal of authenticity. So, pretty cool. Signed by John Romita Jr. That was a really cool find. So a nice little stack of autographed books. All right, now getting to the final stack of books. Some of the best books I found in this collection. Uh, it's kind of random. It's kind of all over the place, but let's take a look. This first one is very unique and very cool. This is a commissioned artwork uh, done on the blank cover of Incredible Hulk 635. This was done by Ken Landgraf in 2011. But man, Hulk is amazing. This art is just really, really cool. Every inch of this cover has been drawn on. But I've seen stuff like this before, which is amazing. But I've never seen the back cover done as well. Here we have Abomination, all these explosions in the sky. This is an amazing piece of commissioned artwork. Wow. Wow. Hulk looks awesome. He's like holding up the rock, which is like holding the trade dress. I thought that was so cool. But the fact that it's front and back cover done, that is very, very cool. Such a unique, one-of-a-kind piece to find in this collection. I think I, this is like one of the best things I found in the collection. I think that is so, so amazing. All right, this next book here, I actually had no idea what it was. I've never seen this before. I uh, had to do a little uh, research, but this book actually has some pretty big value. Star Wars Invasion Rescues, issue number one. And this variant cover is limited 
to only 1,000 copies. And I, uh, I wasn't too familiar with this book here, but it has some decent value and it's a very, very small print run. Pretty cool. Also a very unique thing to find in this collection. There's a lot of like modern stuff in here. So very, very cool to find that. Um, limited to 1,000 copies. Not too bad. I also found Something is Killing the Children, issue number one. Very cool to find this. Uh, this is the third printing. Um, it's got, I think it has like a little spine tick right here. But overall, not a bad looking book. Third printing has some decent value. Very, very cool. Also had the fourth printing. This has an awesome cover. And I mean, this book is pretty flawless. Excited to find this in here. These were the only Something is Killing the Children books in the entire collection. And they're both issue number one, third and fourth printing. Very cool to find that. Uh, here's another random key. This is the first cameo appearance of Anti-Venom. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 569. This is a pretty decent looking book. It does have a little spine tick. Uh, like I said, a lot of these books have been read. Uh, these weren't part of a collection to put in a bag and board and stick in a box somewhere. These were well-loved and well-read. So pretty cool to find this book. It has some decent value. Also found a pretty cool key here, Invincible Iron Man number 9, the first appearance of Riri Williams. Not a bad-looking book. I think it has a little spine tick on there. You know, like the rest of the books, it has been read. Uh, well-loved, well-read. But uh, really cool to find this key here. Not too bad. Has some decent value. Uh, Marvel Now, point one, issue number one. The first appearance of America Chavez. Right there on the cover of these little files that Nick Fury's throwing out. Uh, pretty awesome. There she is. First appearance, America Chavez. Uh, I had a feeling I was going to find this book. I don't know why. Uh, there was a couple of these Marvel Now point one books. And uh, I'm glad I found this one. Not too bad. Also, Captain America 25, the first appearance of Sam Wilson as Captain America. And as you see, it has a couple little bends in the spine. Um, like everything else, it has been read. So pretty cool to find this book as well. Lots of modern keys. But now let's jump all the way back to Silver Age with Amazing Spider-Man 52 the third appearance of Kingpin. Awesome cover. Really love this with a, a J. Jonah Jameson and Spidey trapped in this, well, I guess at the bottom of a well or whatever it is. Uh, really, really cool cover. Very low grade book, unfortunately. Lots of uh, chipping and spine stresses and tears and just not a very great looking book, but presents well and has a great cover, and it's the third appearance of Kingpin, so why not? This is the only old Spider-Man book that was in the collection, but happy to find this one. There was uh, another copy of Wolverine number eight. Uh, if you saw in the first video, I had the whole series of Wolverine issues one through 130. Uh, the issue number eight in that other box had a bunch of spine ticks, but luckily, this one is pretty... Oh, no, I lied. It's got a little crunch down there, unfortunately. I was going to say, I thought this one was really clean. All right, I might be able to work a little magic with the press on that. That might be color breaking, though, but still, all good. I'm happy to find another Wolverine number eight in the collection. Such a cool cover. Very cool. Also, another copy, two copies of... Uh, Wolverine 88, the first meeting of uh, Deadpool and Wolverine. This one, uh, the other issue in the other box had a big, like a uh, spine tick or almost a little tear up by the staple. Uh, but this one here is, sorry, let me try to grab this gently. Um, this one is actually pretty clean. Not too, yeah, this one's actually really nice. 
All right, so this one's definitely going to be a keeper for the collection. I actually had a very high-grade copy of this, uh, but when the book blew up, I sold it. And, you know, what are you going to do? Now I got another copy to add to my personal collection. And this one's in pretty decent shape. So happy to get uh, another copy of this. So there was actually two of these and two of the Wolverine number eights. But really excited to have this one, uh, especially right now with the whole uh, movie, Deadpool 3 and everything, all the hype. You know, definitely an awesome book. And then last book here, this is nothing crazy uh, because it's very low grade. Uh, it actually has a... Um, um, the the centerfold and a couple of the uh, pages are uh, you know disconnected from the staple so that's kind of unfortunate it's a lower grade but this is werewolf by night 33 um you know in a collection of mostly modern books uh, with a little bit of silver age a little bit of bronze age a little bit of copper uh, it was cool to find this this kind of just fell out of nowhere uh, this is the second appearance of Moon Knight, as you probably know. Uh, but like I said, very low grade, detached uh, centerfold. The cover might be detached as well. I mean, it's pretty pretty rough shape. But I thought that was really cool to find a second appearance of Moon Knight, Werewolf 33. Not too bad. Um, so this collection was very diverse. I mean, it was all over the place. Modern, copper. Uh, bronze, silver, and golden age books. What can you say? Very fun to go through all these books. And I'm very excited to add a lot of this to my own personal collection. And like I said, I'm going to be offloading a lot of the other books that I don't want for myself, uh, which are still great books. Um, but I'll probably just end up selling those, you know, at my, uh, local flea market or, you know, I actually was, had some intentions of buying a collection, um, and trying to get a table at a local comic show. So hopefully I can do that because I just think it's a lot of fun. I wanted to go out to a show and try to, uh, you know, and sell comics and talk to people and just have a good time. Really, I just want to do it for my own entertainment. Uh, I'm not really looking to make a million dollars or anything like that. I have a day job. I have uh, multiple avenues of different things that I do. Comics is just a hobby. And when you can fund the hobby and help pay for more books and, you know, cover the expenses of some of the things that I've been doing with comics, you know, that's always a great thing. Uh, so that's really what I want to do is, is keep a lot of this for myself. And then I'm going to sell off what I don't want and hopefully make a couple bucks back to just buy more stuff so I can make more videos for you guys to watch. All right. Now for the time you've been waiting so patiently for, let's talk about how much I paid for this collection. Okay, so the first thing I want to mention is that I actually don't have much experience buying comic collections. I'm not a big comic reseller. Uh, I do this to fund the hobby. I've actually only purchased two other collections in my entire history of comic collecting, and they were very small collections where I paid like $100 or maybe $200. Uh, this collection was enormous, especially for someone like me. Uh, I, after doing the math, I believe there's around 9,300 comic books uh, just by going off how many boxes there were. Uh, and of course, I didn't count them all. That would take way too much time. So uh, also, uh, before you go down in the comments and tell me I ripped this guy off, I just want to let you know I did pay the full asking price that was on the Facebook Marketplace listing. So, you know, this guy owned a comic book shop, so he knows exactly what to ask for books, and he knew exactly what he had. I'm sure he's purchased many collections in his time, and he knew exactly what to sell this for. So I'm sure he did just fine uh, with the price he asked, and for me, this was an incredible deal, because uh, I'm used to paying one two, three dollars a comic uh, for run filler. And then for any of these keys, you know, I usually pay right around fair market value. Uh, sometimes I get good deals here and there. Uh, but I think this collection was definitely worth my time and my uh, my own money because 
I think all the books that were in this collection were awesome. Uh, I'm keeping a lot of these books for my own personal collection, uh, especially all the older books and some of the cool modern keys and a lot of these runs that I've never read before. You know, I'm actually excited to have a lot of these books. And like I said, I'm also just going to unload a lot of the filler books for like a dollar a piece or sometimes I, I even sell books for 50 cents at my flea market. Um, also, I would like to get a booth at a local comic convention. So this gives me plenty of inventory and it's always great to have multiple boxes of dollar books and, you know, books that sell from one to maybe $10. So all that being said, 9,300 comics, I ended up paying full asking price, which was $2,000. So if you do the math, that comes out to be 20 cents per comic. I think for me personally, that's an outstanding deal. Uh, I got a lot of really cool books, some decent keys. Uh, when you could say you paid 20 cents for a uh, first appearance on Mr. Sinister or something like that, I think that's an incredible score on my end. But also, like I said, the seller owned a comic book shop. Uh, he was not unexperienced by any means, and I'm sure he was extremely happy to get that money. And now he can move uh, out of state and have some funding for you know his next endeavor and all his traveling and whatever. So I think that was an awesome deal for me, and I'm glad you know, that he was able to unload his collection for what he wanted. I did not nickel and dime him. Uh, I paid full asking price because I did the math. Even if they're all dollar books and no keys or grails, you know, 20 cents a book, I think is very fair. It allows me to make a few cents for every book. Uh, not too bad. Really excited about this purchase. Let me know down in the comments. What do you think? Um, I think $2,000 for this big collection was a amazing deal. I am extremely happy. Uh, honestly, I'm going to take my time selling this stuff. Um, that's pretty much it. You know, I just think this was a great experience and, uh, it's been a lot of fun going through all these books and learning about a lot of these modern keys that I didn't know about and seeing a lot of this random indie books that I've never seen. Uh, it's, it's been an incredible experience. Uh, it gives me plenty of inventory for my, my, uh, flea markets and, uh, for my, um, you know, if I decide to do a local comic show, very happy, super excited. Let me know down in the comments. What do you think about this purchase? I think $2,000 was an awesome deal. And that is the conclusion of my enormous comic book haul. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, the past video as well. If you haven't seen part one, definitely take a look at that. I show off some of the other series and runs that were in this collection. And of course, this video, we show it off some of the better books. So that's it for today's video. Please smash that like button. If you enjoyed what you saw, subscribe to the channel so you can see more content just like this and ring that notification bell so you can see when I upload my next video. And as always, have a great day.